few months ago, um, James Gray, you know, got him my agent and I read it and uh, I thought it was intriguing uh, about a, a family in this part of America. And uh, I said that I'd love to do it. I really would like to do it. And uh, I'd seen a, a, quite a number of James Gray's films. And I think there are so many layers within those family films. Um, and he's a very clever director, very precise director, but also very free to work with. And we set up an email correspondence, you know, and, um, to play a Jewish grandfather. So I had to refigure a few things because I can't do a sort of Brooklyn accent or New York accent. I think I, I know some English actors are good at that. I'm not good at that. And actually trying to learn a, um, a dialect is like having an extra thumb or, or an extra leg, you know, uh, gets in the way. So I created a little biography which I submitted to him that I come from Central Europe as a, a nine year old kid from uh, and the last big intake at Ellis Island, the Great Migration started from Central Europe, the pogroms, and uh, all kinds of people came here, all, all Eastern Europe, and there were the vicious pogroms in Russia and the Ukraine, and Jews were persecuted, and so it was a wonderful opportunity, and um, an incredible cast to work with, um, really quite extraordinary, so I'm, I'm very pleased to be here, and James is a wonderful director. Well, yes, it is very personal because it's his story. So I don't know what he feels about my reinventing his grandfather, but we swapped stories about my grandparents, my grandfather, and the habits of, you know, grandparents and their young grandchildren. I made sure that I knew all the scenes before we started. And what I was really pleased with was the way he allows you to not rewrite, but to improvise within the structure. I'm all for the structure, learn your lines, show up and know, the, know your stuff, know the text. And then you're free to improvise within that. And he seems to like that style. Um, because without knowledge of the script, knowledge of the text, um, you're blind, you have to know the stuff. A lot of actors have other methods of working. Mine is to simply know the text so well, like following a roadmap. And that's what it was like working with uh, James and then working with astonishing people, uh, Anne Hathaway and uh, uh, Jeremy Strong and Tova Felter, everyone, just quite remarkable. And that's, that's, that makes it so easy. I thought it'd be quite a challenge and I, I'm very caught up in um, my particular affinity to um, Jewish culture is, is close because uh, I remember during the war, just after the war, I was a seven-year-old boy and I remember the newsreel films of the release of the prisoners from the various concentration camps. So that was a very part of my childhood consciousness. I mean, all, all, I was born in Wales where we didn't suffer the horrors that they did, but I remember that so clearly. And then I was in uh, Jerusalem in 1973 and I went to Yad Vashem. Um, so I was fascinated by that part of, of our, our terrible human history. And I think a lot of people have forgotten that. And I remember it so clearly. And uh, if it's anything, it's my contribution or small tribute to the pain in the world. Why do we have that? How did Hitler rise to power? Why do we persecute? What's the matter with us? And we're all capable of it. And that particular part of history is very painful to read. But then it follows right through the 20th century, the bloodiest of all centuries. Stalin and Russia, Mao, Tsung and China, millions of people sacrificed for an ideology or for the wrong thinking. Very much like uh, Orwell's Utopia, you know, 1984. And that happens in our history time and time again. It rises up and then it fades away. So that's, I'm, I'm drawn to that part of it, history, Amy. The boy is a little strange, he's a little lost. He wants to be an artist and his father and mother 
typically say, well, there's no money in that, they're the big buckaroos. And that's understandable. Parents wouldn't worry. I mean, a boy wanting to be an actor or an artist, I mean, come on. And I went through that myself when I was a kid. My father was an, an actor. Okay, well, uh, and I think all kids suffer that. And uh, so, but I'm there to encourage him. As my grandfather was there with me, he said, don't worry, you, you'll do fine. Because my, my parents always, you know, what's going to happen to you because I'm not very good at school. My grandfather said, you do okay, you'll do fine. And I look back and I think, well, we did okay, kid. And uh, my job, my, my interpretation there, or my objective, let's say, is to encourage the boy, think big. You know, fulfill your dreams, make the world a better place, because we're all trudging through this great battle of life. And I warned him, there's one scene we did yesterday, to watch out for the bigots and the insidious racism that's in, you know, the fictional school, but in his school. And uh, I warn him, I said, don't you ever forget. Don't ever put up with that, you know. And so that's my farewell to him. Think big, be kind, and be compassionate. And remember, you're human. Don't try to be perfect. Do the best you can, but do not put up with bigotry and racism and all that. So that's, I'm not saying this to make a big political message, but that's what the part is really. I picked up on all that through my years of growing up. You know, I worked with a lot of, some very close friends, my Jewish actors and I had, and friends in Los Angeles. And I, I mean, I've been part of a Jewish family and been invited in, you know. <laughs> and I find it amusing and funny because there's always drama and uh, love and all that. And uh, I come from a, a Welsh family, which is different, you know. And uh, I'm not an Anglo-Saxon, I'm Welsh. It's not much difference, I guess. But um, So being part of this typical family that we have been in the last few weeks in this film, or the last two weeks, at the dining table and the, you know, the arguments and the two bad kids and the father laying down the law and the upheaval, very much like Seinfeld, you know. <laughs> so I'm a great fan of Seinfeld. But you know, it's, so that's why I'm, I'm proud to be part of this. She is remarkable and uh, so generous and kind and human and you know, feet on the ground and all that stuff, none of that, you know, airy stuff that some people get up to in this business. You know, God bless them, but uh, she's very, you know, very practical and uh, friendly and chatty and uh, we had a lot of chats together and Tova Felcher and, and uh, Jeremy and, um, yeah, very, very good, excellent. Wonderful. We have a great rapport. <laughs> I see. We, we would, because Banks is very serious, you know, very formal. I don't know how old he is, I think 12, 13, and kind of rather formal. And we were doing a scene in the hospital the other day, and um, I, I just wanted to encourage him because he's so good. I said, you're, you're a terrific actor. He said, you're pretty good yourself. <laughs> I stopped all the camera crew. I said, well, I've been doing it a few years now. But he's wonderful, you know, and, uh, and uh, James is wonderful with him. And it's, uh, but he's got, he's got a lot of confidence and that's what it takes. And the other kid, Brian, he's wonderful. Um, they're very confident. I think Ryan is actually uh, doing a lot of theatre work. But Banks is um, pretty good, very, very good. And surprising because we did a scene the other day and he has to break down in it and suddenly the tears came because his father's been cruel to him. You know, his father's been disciplined with him. Not cruel, but because the, the boy's all over the place. So the father's in the old school, you know, don't spare the rod and all that. And I go in with his grandfather. But it's just a wonderful scene and he was um, astonishing, I mean. And on several takes, you could, could repeat the emotional stuff. So I don't know how he works, but it's certainly good. Well, obviously, it's very personal to him. I mean, it's got nothing to do with my background, but it must be 
Because that house we filmed in is close to his own house. And uh, I th believe similar in size. Very small, cramped quarters. And uh, yeah, it, it obviously came back to him, the chandeliers, the lamps, the fixtures. And for me, it's very interesting because I've never worked in this part of um, the city. In this part of the East Coast, never, well, I have worked in New York and Manhattan, but never worked in New Jersey and over here. Uh, different world. A very strong Jewish community where we filmed in the house, and the neighbors would be out there in the streets and uh, afterwards, you know. And it was, a, it was quite a wonderful atmosphere. So I look at my own life and think, how did I end up here? How do I do these things? I didn't know how I, I made no plans to be anything. And uh, my career, what you want to call it, took off. And the years have passed by. And I, I'm astonished. I think, was this all a dream? Or did I, did I choreograph it? No, not at all. I don't know what it's about, really. But I'm, the grandfather's quite ill. And... Um, they call him in the film that he's a strong man, but I'm wasting away. So the trick is to get clothes to the two big oversized shirts. And I remember when my grandfather was very ill and he had shirts, with, he'd do the tie, but it would hang down here. And I remember that lock, the drawn in. I'm a wonderful makeup artist who makes me look quite ill. And I'm very robust, I'm very healthy, I hope. I think I am, and strong. So I wanted to do that. And so I, I, I'm now going to, I'm going to be 84, and then playing the scene yesterday in the Flushing Meadows. That, those days when you're going to say goodbye, and I remember that lost look in my own grandfather's face, like they're already leaving. And uh, it was very helpful. So I saw myself in the camera reflection. I thought, oh, God, I look like my own grandfather. <laughs> James's films are very special in that way. They're contained, they have a content of family and values and love and all the ups and downs of life, pain, suffering. And uh, I think they do connect with audiences. I think it's a tendency, I'll stick my neck out here, there's a tendency to be condescending towards. They, oh, they only want fast guns and all that stuff and speeding and big epic things, which are fine. There's nothing wrong with any of that. But it's a change to do something. I just did one called The Father, which is very contained. It was a French film, really, but set in England with a brilliant director, Florian Zella, and all set in one apartment, but a man with dementia. And what was remarkable about it was so easy to do. Uh, no great production designs. And uh, you get an excellent script like this is, then you're following a roadmap. You don't have to examine and analyze and wonder where I'm come from. <laughs> it's there in the script. So I don't waste my time doing it. I used to do a lot of that you know, method. And well, there's nothing wrong with that, but uh, I've, I've been doing it a long time now. So I know the sort of rules for myself, learn the text, show up, relax, and let it happen. James, I noticed this. he says, I don't want the camera to move. Let's keep it here. And, uh, and that creates that intimacy and lets the audience understand. Because if you're watching a camera moving all over the place, you think, who cares? Life's not like that. And Jeremy Strong, who I've never worked with before, but I'm a great fan of um, that film with Brian Cox, the series um, Succession. I, getting into binge watching, which I mustn't do because I can't sleep if I do that. But I, I'm intrigued by it because the performance is so good. And Jeremy is so strong as, a, as, a, as an actor. And I don't know, I don't, when I'm talking to him, I don't know if he's in the part I think he is, or it's him. I'm not sure who he is. But uh, <laughs> there's some actually not quite sure. Are you the you or are you the character you're playing? So I, whatever it is, he's a very, very, very strong actor and uh, enjoyable to work with. Very serious, but um, earnest, and I mean that in a good sense. Disciplined and, uh, you know, you'd, you'd have to be that to be in something like Succession with Brian Cox and that uh, 
immense cast and uh, the discipline of that production. So I'm uh, hooked on that. And, uh, Etova is wonderful. Yeah, and Marcia and Teddy and uh, oh, an incredible cast. No, no work required, no acting required. You shop at set and just go for it and have some fun with it. I want to thank the crew. The crew is the most important part. They put our faces up on the screen. And these guys work so hard, and as we know lately, you know, sets are very dangerous, especially if you're working long hours. And these guys, um, women and men, are on their feet all day. You get tired at the end of the day, and that's, that's when... Uh, so, I, in my own way, I try to encourage you, know, don't, don't rush it. If I were a director or a producer, I'd say, stop running around, because that's when the accidents happen. People get tired, they fall or they bump into things and cause severe injuries. And... Um, yeah, I think you now if I were a producer or director, I'd address, I'd address that. You know, thank the crew because they're the ones who do it. They really are, and I make sure I know as many as I can. You know, because nobody wants to feel anonymous. People want to be recognised. You say, "Good morning, how are you? How are you doing?" You know, just make people feel alive that they belong, that they're doing important work, and they are. It's more important carrying a camera and the grips and carrying all that equipment on the stairs to photograph my silly face and that takes a lot of work and I really appreciate that and uh, you know, makeup and props and hairdressing and wardrobe and uh, the electricians the camera the sound that's uh, that's teamwork and um, I never forget that I was encouraged by that many years ago and I did my first film with Catherine Happen and Peter O'Toole it's called Line of Winter God, that's 1967. It's my first film, and I remember Heffern saying, always remember who's filming you, it's the crew. Always remember and appreciate the crew. And she was wonderful with them. Morning, Lenny, she'd say to the electrician, how are you, you were out drinking last night? <laughs> she, no, she was, the crew loved her because, and Olivia was another one, Lawrence Olivia. Always knew all the crew's name. Now that's having your feet on the ground, I think.